Ooh, it's Christy, and I'm about to um, show you live and in person what um, the color fastness is in um, in these dyes that I made from um, cabbage, red cabbage. So um, over here I have all these stuff that I've dried with different dyes. That uh, red is cochineal, not red cabbage. It was gorgeous though, isn't it? Anyways, I wanted to show you because I was, um, I let all this dry out in the sun yesterday and uh, I washed this one. This is what it looked like originally. So you can see that some color is retained with cabbage dyes, but <clears throat> you're definitely going to have a major reduction in your saturation when you're done. Now, I mean, red cabbage is extremely cheap and highly available so if you're okay with having a slightly less saturated color then go for it. Um, this is mordanted with um, alum. Now let me get rid of my little self here. Um, with alum and I've found in my experiments that alum is not the best mordant for red cabbage. It seems like, and this is just warm water in here, but you see there's already starting to get to be a lot of color in my water. Um, I've noticed that tannins are great mordants for, um, for red cabbage. And almost like the alum blocks the absorption. So maybe a better method would be not to pre-mordant your fiber, but maybe even post mordant your fiber and that's another um, that's another test for another day well actually I guess I could do it today because I still have a whole pot of my red cabbage dye now the cool thing about red cabbage dye is you can change it really easily to get a wide spectrum of colors you can get purple red blue and yellow and green and you can see here I've got the green so, you know, you and you do all that by changing it, the pH. So you just move it back and forth with either baking soda or um, white vinegar. It's extremely easy, and this is what you get. So I'm, I'm wondering if this one was one of my tannin wardens because see, it's really not losing as much color as the other one. Um. So here we no, it's lost some. So here, so here we go. Um, some of these I had mordanted um, with um, with my robolin, which looks like this. It starts out as yellow, and then I put all these in a blue dye bath to make this green. So, hmm, I'm kind of happy with that. I kind of wish I had more of it. These are just going to have to be accents on my, uh, whatever I make when I wet felt something. Lately, I'm into making a lot of tunic tops. So, or maybe they'll become awesome pre-felt leaves that I'll incorporate into that. But, um, there you go. I mean, all I did was chop up the red cabbage and, um, boil it for an hour and then took out all the, the red cabbage leaves, leaf particles, and I had a great dye bath that has um, dyed, oh golly, um, I guess I did a total of four ounces so far and my dye bath is still very strong. Let me take you over to my dye bath. Hold on a second. So here's my dye bath. And see, right now it's purple. But if I wanted to switch it to blue, all I'd have to do is add baking soda. And if I wanted to make it more purple or red, all I would have to do is put more vinegar in it. And incidentally, if you get low on your fluid level, just add more water because it's the chemical that was in the uh, red cabbage that is the colorant, not the water or the fluid in there. So the more water you add, it doesn't dilute your your dye at all. 
it just makes it possible to put more fiber in there. So there you go. That was alpaca fiber that I was dyeing, if you're interested. But it'll work on all animal fibers, including silk. I hope that was helpful to you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.